Hey YouTube, what's up? So today we're going to talk about Mantis Shrimp. Now Mantis Shrimp is becoming increasingly popular in the hobby. Um, just recently, I mean, people, you know, setting up dedicated tanks to keep them, and for good reason. I mean, you know, they're, they're such fascinating creatures, I can't even tell you guys. Um, their behavior, their personalities, their intelligence, and just their look is very alien, and I think that appeals to a lot of people. Um, you know, and so yeah, a lot of people, you know, have been becoming fascinated with Mantis Shrimp, and they want to know how to keep them. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the size of the tank. Now this um, depends greatly on what species you're going to go with. Um, there's some species that are about one inch long and then there's some that are about uh, close to 24 inches long. Um, so it really does depend on what species you're getting. I, I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, you to buy a 10 gallon tank or 20 gallon tank and then just go out and buy um, some sort of miscellaneous um, unknown species of mantis that you happen to stumble upon in your local fish, fish store. You definitely want to um, kind of do your research and, and look at the different species and what they need and get an idea of um, you know like the difference for example of a spear and a uh, smasher type mantis and I'm going to go into that as well later on in the video but um, definitely do a little bit more a little research you definitely don't want to end up with something that um, you know and they do grow fast you definitely don't want to end up with something that's going to blow up and turn into a monster in your 10 gallon tank so uh, yeah do your research um, a lot of you guys already know this, but the species I uh, am keeping here in this tank, uh, this is a 20 gallon tank by the way, is a, uh, a peacock mantis shrimp. It's by far the most popular. Um, it's the most colorful and it doesn't get too large and um, it seems to be a little bit more um, personable than a lot of other species. It's not as timid and, and cryptic. Um, so I can, I can definitely see why it's most popular um, and mo most common in fish stores for that reason. Um, for, for a peacock mantis shrimp, um, a 20 gallon tank is probably ideal. Um, if I could do it again, um, or if I, you know, if I, for example, didn't already have this tank lying around, this is a 20 gallon tall, um, with a canopy and the stand and everything. If I didn't have it already lying around, um, I probably would have definitely went with a, either a 20 gallon long, or a, um, maybe even a 40 gallon tank. Um, because they, I definitely, they definitely like the space, the floor space. Um, so this really isn't ideal. Um, but for now, the mantis seems to enjoy it. And if I feel like he, he's getting too large or it's too cramped in this tank, um, then I'll just swap him over to a 40-gallon tank. Simple as that. So, uh, yeah. And, and there's some species, like I said, that stay very, very small. And you could keep them in like a 4-gallon tank on your desk. I mean, it's uh, right now, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find a yellow mantis and maybe put it in my little 4-gallon. But, yeah, so it definitely depends on the species. Uh, the zebra mantis is another popular one. Um, they get very, very large. As far as I know, they're the largest mantis. I could be wrong on that, though. Um, they're definitely the most, or de definitely the largest um, popular mantis in this hobby. Um, they do get very large, um, and they're spears. Now, um, you know, let's talk about the difference between a smasher type mantis and a spear type mantis. A spearing mantis um, looks more like a mantis, like a praying mantis, um, and they, like like their name says, they actually spear their prey, and they go for more fish. Um, they will eat shrimp and crabs as far as I know, but their, their main uh, diet consists of uh, mainly fish. So you really can't keep any fish with a, a spearing type mantis. So like a zebra, um, I believe the yellow mantis is a spear type. Uh, so th again, that's also why you need to do your research. You want to make sure if you plan on having other tank mates with it, that you're not going to throw a fish into a tank that it's going to get, you know, slaughtered within two seconds and become lunch. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so the spears, you absolutely can't keep with any fish as far as I know, um, you know, and certainly no fish you care about. Uh, and so you really, for a spearing type, you want a lot of sand, you want to just rock, and uh, coral, can you keep them with coral? You don't see it very often, you don't see a lot of tanks, it seems like, with coral. Um, and I'm going to go into that as well later on in the video, but, so a spear eats fish, a smasher, like its name, actually smashes its prey. Um, these have more of the reputation for like smashing tanks open and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how true all those are. I've yet to meet somebody that actually had that happen to them, but um, we'll see. You know, I'm sure there's someone out there that actually that actually happened to. But um, the smashers you can keep with fish. Um, I will say though, I wouldn't put them with anything that you care very much about or something that's very expensive. I definitely wouldn't put one with a black tang or a mandarin that you had to baby feed until it started taking frozen. Nothing you care about. Um, I definitely wouldn't throw like a Blenny or a Dragonet or a, a Gobi or anything like that in this tank because um, they're slower and they're, and they're, they're bottom dwelling fish and um, I feel like they would uh, run the risk of uh, running into a mantis more often and, and that just probably wouldn't end very well. The damsel kind of hangs out in the water column, he has his own little space 
So they kind of keep to, to themselves and they don't really bother each other. When I first put the, there he goes, ah, whatever. But uh, when I first put the mantis in, the damsel went up and tried to you know, start a fight with him and then uh, the mantis kicked the crap out of the damsel. Um, and then, you know, he had scars and his tail was ripped and everything, but um, since then he's healed up and they've kind of, they respect each other now and they kind of keep to themselves. So you can keep fish with smashers, but like I said, nothing you care very much about, but to add movement, uh, maybe damsels or some chromis or things like that, some, some fish that can kind of, um, uh, you know, they'll stay in the water column more often. Uh, coral, can you keep coral with mantis shrimp? Uh, yeah, but this is sort of similar to what I said about fish. Um, nothing you really care about too much because they will go around and you guys can see he knocked over the uh, my torch He has rearranged his tank completely. He went and he turned the um, Yeah, you can't really see it the uh, pom-pom zinnia into like his door um, He just kind of like he just totally moved things around um, So if you're one of those people that's really kind of anal about uh, the positions of everything in your tank and you want it and you put your little SPS exactly where you want it um, I definitely wouldn't recommend mixing coral and uh, mantis shrimp because it's it's not going to stay like that for long. Uh, also, of course, um, what it comes down to is lighting, and um, and I'm lighting is very something something I almost regret about this tank because um, I did set this tank up as a mantis shrimp tank from the get go. So I knew when I set this tank up, the goal was to have a mantis shrimp in it of some kind, um, and so really I should have gone with a, a dimmer light um, because you guys can see. I mean, he's very, he's not out. You know, I, I noticed when I first set this tank up, just just a couple days ago, when I, you know, when I was, uh, or about a week ago, when I moved it up here to my new apartment, and I set everything up, and the light wasn't on yet. My mantis was out, you know, all the time. He was looking, exploring, and looking around, and playing with shells and things like that. Um, so that made me think, you know, if I were to do that again, and if this mantis gets too big for this tank, and I move him over to like a 40 gallon or a 20 gallon long. Um, I definitely, I might not even put any lighting at all, I might just position it towards the window sort of so that during the day I kind of get some sunlight coming in. Because um, the mantis, they, the, the less light they have the better, um, but at the point, you know, at this point here I just, I love the way this tank looks so much and the, you know, the coral and the algae and everything looks really nice. Um, so for now the light's going to remain there. That might change in the future, um, but I, I really doubt it. So um, yeah, lighting, the less lighting, the better. Unless you know, you're trying to keep coral, then you're gonna kinda of have to sacrifice you know, the amount of interaction you have with your mantis shrimp. Uh, now filtration, filtration's another big thing because they are messy animals. And you, they're kinda of like an eel. You know, you've gotta feed them, not very frequently, but you feed them uh, kind of messy, messy foods. I feed my guy uh, two, two times a week, and um, each time I feed uh, either a strip of clam, from my local fish store from I think it's Salt Pro or Pro Salt, Pro Salt's the brand, or uh, cocktail shrimp uncooked from Publix. Um, so I feed that twice a week. So that's two shrimps in a uh, week or, or two clam strips, whatever I end up doing that week. Um, so they are messy animals. So you definitely, um, you're gonna either have to do um, a lot of water changes, which is definitely what, the route I did not wanna have to go. So I ended up buying this um, Hydor Slim Skim Nano protein skimmer on the back. And guys, this is one of the best pieces of equipment I've, I've bought for any tank. I'm just I'm so impressed with its um, the way the way it works and its its ability to actually keep the tank clean and it's dead silent. And it looks kind of nice. It almost resembles like an overflow box or something. So that kind of looks kind of cool being next to a larger tank that actually has an overflow box. And this one almost looks like it does. Um, so I think it looks good. It's sleek. Um, you can just stick it in the corner. So and I think I spent a hundred bucks on it. I want to say so. Yeah, if you're gonna do a mantis shrimp tank, I'd, I'd recommend spending the extra maybe a hundred bucks to uh, or, or so to put a skimmer on there because it makes your life easier, makes the mantis shrimp's life um, better, and um, so I mean I I'd definitely recommend doing that. It'll ease the amount of maintenance you have to do on the tank. Um, but most people I've noticed don't do that. Most people just have a tank like a hangout back filter or an intake filter that are much cheaper, but they, and they do the job. You know, they keep the tank aerated, you know, do everything a filter should do, but. Um, they have to definitely keep up with the water changes more to keep the wa water quality where they want it. Uh, so yeah, filtration is definitely important and definitely something to keep in mind when you're setting up a mantis shrimp tank, especially for the larger species. Um, obviously they're going to eat more and they can produce more waste, of course. Um, I do have a, a power head. It's not totally necessary at all for the, for the mantis, but it keeps the, the water oxygenated and it's good for the, uh, the algae and the coral and everything else I have in this tank that needs it, that requires the water flow. 
Um, but for really for a Mantis, um, you don't have to do that. But I mean, powerheads are pretty cheap, so may as well throw one in just to just to keep the water, the surface disturbed the whole time. You know, may as well. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, and something that I definitely didn't consider when I when I first originally set up this tank, um, the amount of sand you need. Um, originally, I had maybe I want to say one one and a half inches uh, deep sand bed. It was mixed. Um, I used fine sand from Cripsy and then the uh, coarser kind of like crushed coral from Cripsy. I mixed that. I usually do that for all my tanks, but um, it's definitely important that you use kind of a coarser substrate for a mantis because they're going to be creating burrows and sifting things around, and you don't want to sandstorm your tank all the time. Um, but you definitely want to keep in mind, uh, you know, the larger the mantis, the more sand you want. Um, this is about maybe two and a half inches deep, um, the sand bed here. Um, and I honestly think it could, could use a little bit more. Um, when I had the shallower sand bed, I could actually hear the mantis um, at night going in and trying to bust the bottom of the tank. And even though I don't totally buy that, that myth, um, that rumor that mantis shrimps can do that, it still kind of freaked me out. And I could def definitely could tell he was frustrated by the fact that he couldn't create as deep of a burrow as he, as he really wanted to. Um, another thing that you can do to kind of keep your mantis from possibly breaking the bottom of the tank if, you know, if they're large enough and whatever, you know, you have a stroke of bad luck that day or whatever. Um, I, I have, one of my coworkers actually had a great idea. Uh, take some egg crate and cut it to the, um, to the size of the floor of your tank and just slide it in and then put the sand on top of that. That way he can't, um, he most likely can't get through the egg crate um, and then he, you know, the bottom of your tank is protected from then on. Um, I was trying to do that with this tank and unfortunately it just kept, I didn't put it in right so I ended up just taking it out. So there is that chance that my mantis might get frustrated one day and try to bust the bottom of the tank open but um, I'll cross that road when I get to it, or I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But uh, yeah, I would recommend trying that though, you know, getting some egg crate and just sliding it in just, you know, may as well, right? Uh, but yeah, so filtration, very important. Um, substrate very important uh, live rock I you know go as sparse as possible I mean for this 20 gallon tank I, I this is maybe 10 pounds um, this is a really nice piece of live rock that I found so I just threw it in there but um, really you don't even need that just something for him to create a little sh bit of shelter and then nothing really beyond that I mean you're not you don't want for a 20 gallon tank you're not gonna need 20 pounds of live rock let's put it that way uh, so as far as uh, uh, let me see just reading this over real quick. Uh, will he smash my tank open? Like I said, mm, probably not, but you know, some people actually do go acrylic just to kind of protect themselves and like ease of mind. Um, and my guy's not full grown yet. I mean, he's only like three inches and they get about six inches max. So there is that chance, but you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I wish he'd come out, but most likely he won't. Um, and it's really is, I think, due to the lighting, honestly, because, um, you know, without this lighting, he was out all the time. But yeah, I, I can't tell you guys enough how how just amazing these animals are. Um, just so so intelligent. I mean, you look at them and you can definitely feel them watching you. I'll put my phone up to the side of the tank and he'll come up and interact with it and kind of watch the YouTube video that I'm showing him. Um, so it's it's very very cool and it's one of those things too where you can like show it off to your friends that come over and you just hey look at this and you put some food in and he comes out. Um, very very cool guys and they live a long time. I uh, I read somewhere that. Peacock mantis, their lifespan is about 25 years max. So that's pretty impressive. I mean, a lot of people will look at you and go, why are you spending so much money on fish? And a lot of people don't realize a lot of these animals can live um, decades. So, you know, compared to like freshwater fish like tetras and barbs and things like that have a lifespan of like, I think it's like two or three years, something like that. Or betas live like five years max. So um, for whatever reason, saltwater animals seem to have a very uh, much longer lifespan. And the same goes for these mantis from so uh, yeah, if you have any questions concerning mantis shrimp at all, um, please post it in the comment section below and I will answer it. Um, you know, so any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Like the video if you'd like it. Subscribe if you haven't. If you have, I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.